In the Bible, leaven was made of fermented dough. This fermented dough was placed in fresh dough and when baked would cause the bread to rise. During the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Hebrew people were not only instructed to refrain from eating leavened bread, but to completely remove it from their households. Anyone who disobeyed this command, that person shall be cut off from Israel. Jesus speaks of the leaven of the Pharisees as hypocrisy. Inspecting the word hypocrisy, we find the meaning of that as the acting of a stage player. The leavened soul, also known as the hypocrite, outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly are full of lawlessness. And if sin is lawlessness, the hypocrite may have men fooled, but in actuality lives the life for the sinful glory of self and not for Christ. It's more than just removing the leaven or removing the sin or removing the temptation. We have to also talk about the unleavened bread that we're going to partake of. Moses calls the unleavened bread the bread of affliction. And Jesus says he is the bread of life. And when he's giving the bread to his disciples and says, you know, partake of this, and then you're, you're going to be partaking of my body, the first communion service, it was the bread of affliction. It, that was the pea was the Passover lamb that was Passover and they were eating the unleavened bread and it's a picture of entering into the journey of Jesus Christ see when you partake of him when he imputes his righteousness over your life and then asks you to follow him follow in his footsteps bear a cross and follow after him you're going to now start living out what it means to be a messenger of the gospel. You're gonna partake of the unleavened bread and your life is going to tell a story that is going to reflect the gospel. What does uh, Peter tell us? You know, don't count it strange when these fiery trials come upon you. It's the bread of affliction, but it's the nourishing bread that has come down from heaven. It's the nourishing bread that God provides. He's provided it. So. That's what makes it worth it. That's what makes it so wonderful. Okay, so let me read you a verse here. It's in John chapter 15, verse 19, and Jesus gives us these words. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of this world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. When you partake of the unleavened bread, you are no longer having fellowship and meals with this world. The world does not see you as its own and hates you. Because it des despised Christ, it's going to despise you because you are saying you are following him and you're going to also tread the same journey as him. But this is not a bad thing. This is the ultimate mark of the Christian. Are you suffering wrongly? Well, Jesus did, didn't he? But the great thing is that did Jesus resurrect? Well, then so will you. Did Jesus get a crown? Well, then so will you. Because you entered into his death and you learned to die to self, you learned to partake of the unleavened bread, the bread of affliction, the bread that humbles you and brings you low, you also get to enter into the life and the reward that Christ has earned. As believers, we are exiting Egypt. And if the blood of Jesus, the Passover lamb, covers our lives, this means we are leaving in haste. The bread of affliction was a reminder that we are leaving this world in haste. So it's time to remove the leaven from our houses. Because remember, the punishment to Israel was to be cut off. Such severity for eating leaven. And not just eating leaven, even having it in the house. So just remember, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. You know, we can't afford to have these false narratives in our mind. 
hypocrisies, idolatries, where the stories we summon in our brains narrates to us a story where we are the great hero, we are the savior. Because if we allow ourselves to cherish just one sin, no matter how small, it will leaven the whole lump. Now, I'm not saying you need to be perfect. What I'm saying is you need to deal with it. You need to remove it from your house. You need to do your best to deal with it and ask for God. Ask God for the strength to overcome it and put in your part. It might not be something that happens overnight. It might take blood, sweat, and tears, but you need to put in the effort to deal with that because it can take over the whole person if left undealt with, if cherished, if protected, if... When God says you need to repent, you need to confess your sins, and you don't, that's the problem. That's how you deal with it, in repentance and acknowledging it for the sin that it is. And this allows you to enter into the life, which is Jesus Christ. And it's the removal of this leaven that allows us to enter into the journey of Jesus Christ, which is a journey of affliction, but it also is the journey that renews our hearts and that gives us that fidelity as a virgin bride to Christ alone. And if you don't deal with it, see, the end of it isn't that you disobeyed him because you didn't deal with your sin. Thus, you know, he has to leave you out of the kingdom. What happens is that when that sin leavens the whole lump of your person, of your soul, you end up rebelling against Jesus Christ and hating him and renouncing your own salvation. Well, how do I know this? Well, just look at the leaven of the Pharisees. Look at the Pharisees' life. They were given pure truth, the embodiment of God himself, speaking light into their lives, letting them know that he was the way, yet they rejected him, so they cherished their sins because they didn't repent, right? And that's what we're talking about. And they allowed it to bring about the fruit of his crucifixion. So you see this picture. If you cherish that sin, if you cherish anything that belongs to Egypt, this world, the end result is in full rebellion to Jesus Christ. If you're going to partake of the spiritual feast of unleavened bread, it's not only the removing of any cherished sin and repenting of it, but entering into the bread of affliction, the journey of Jesus Christ, and taking up your cross and denying self and dying to self. And that's what we need to learn from this in this short video is we need to do our best to stay away from temptation, but understand that it's not a great and perfect and decadent life that God is going to give us, but it's a life of affliction that's going to teach us humility. It's going to, we're going to mirror the journey of Jesus Christ, but we're also going to receive the war rewards of his resurrection, of eternal life with him. Let that be your meditation this week. And he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory, and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels.